Azuka Midoriya. He was born like everyone else, but soon he would realize that he was a little bit different. Because Azuka Midoriya was born without a quirk. Yes, the thing that would give him the opportunity to become a pro hero, to become a hero like All Might, to do things that others wanted to do for their entire lives, well, he wouldn't be able to do it. Or at least that's what a lot of people would say. He would get backlash from teachers, from students, from everybody, telling him that he should just stop trying now, that he should just give up, that there's no way he's going to be able to actually become a hero, that he's not going to be able to become the hero he wants to be, nor a hero in general. And this would shatter Azuku in pieces. The idea that he can't be like his hero All Might, the idea that he can't be like a hero just that can save people, help people, or do the right thing and do good things in general, the fact that he can't do any of those breaks his heart to pieces. Because Azuku Midoriya, all he sees for himself is becoming a pro hero, just like his idol, All Might. But here's the thing, he would go throughout life like pretty basic and pretty simply. He would go through the motions of going to school and doing this or doing that and, you know, taking time off and doing homework and stuff like that. And it would lead him throughout life and a pretty basic one, at least early on. And he would still feel compelled to actually go and try to become a hero, actually go and still become um, part of UA High School's students or future pro heroes. Now, this would be extremely difficult because at the end of the day, Azuka Midoriya has no quirk and he has not trained or hasn't worked at anything to become stronger. Yes, in terms of studying, he is pretty damn good. I mean, he has a lot of information on different heroes, on their fight styles, and so on and so forth. But in terms of, well, raw power, in terms of martial arts, in terms of just anything you can think of that may help him in this journey, he flat out has not trained it. He flat out has not given himself the ability or the chance to actually defend himself to a large degree. And it all came to a head when his one of his last days at middle school or middle school would come approaching. Because that last day, he would hear the teacher talking about job searches and a career aptitude test and so on, but then he would say and, and cut himself off, saying that he knows every single one of them here wants to become a hero. I mean, who doesn't want to be a hero? Who doesn't want to be like Endeavor, like All Might, like so many other heroes that are out there saving people, right? And they even have some of their own trying out for UA High School, and that would be Katsuki Bakugo. Now, with Katsuki Bakugo, it seems as if he's pretty, um, let's just say prideful of himself, thinking that he is pretty damn great, and his explosion quirk and many other students would tell him that specifically. Now, Azuku Midoriya would be the other person trying out for UA High School, and many of the people there would say that Azuku has no chance, like zero, that there's no chance a quirkless loser like Azuku Midoriya could actually do this. All he is, and in the words of Bakugo at least, all he is is a Deku. He's useless, but this Deku would be changed forever very, very soon. Because before you could even imagine it, Azuku would be done with this class and he would be packing his stuff up but it seems like Bakugo is going to make an example out of him, smashing his hand on the desk, exploding the desk, and even telling Izuku that he would be better off throwing himself off the side of the building and hoping, hoping that he gets a quirk in the next life. And he tells him that he is useless, that there is no point for him to even be here anymore. And let's just say this would break Izuku in terms of he would feel extremely awful as he would take the stuff that that he has and even go out and pick up his journal that is all soaked in a fountain nearby that was thrown outside a window and he would just head home but this time when he was heading home he would leave a little bit differently going underneath a bridge 
that he never goes under but decides to go under today. Now, this would lead to something amazing, but also terrifying at the same time. Because he would hear this crashing of this villain underneath what seems to be a manhole cover, and he looks toward the manhole cover, wondering what the hell it is, thinking to himself that there shouldn't be anybody down there anyways, but soon he would realize very quickly at what this thing is, because the manhole cover would come blasting out, and he would barely be able to dodge it as it's about to hit him in the face. The sludge villain would come barreling toward him without even a second notice, just completely engulfing Azuku, and as Azuku continues to struggle and slu the sludge villain continues to try and basically suffocate him and take his body, it seems as if Azuku's well, air is slipping. His oxygen, all the, his ability to breathe is going away and the sludge villain continuously is seemingly and seemingly actually about to kill him. The sludge villain in his panic seems to try and take over Azuku's body but is actually failing. He's trying to take over Azuku's body, but unfortunately fails and, well, almost kills Azuku instead. But luckily, there's someone that is about to show up that is going to save him. But unfortunately, not save him in time. At least, not in time for Azuku Midoriya to die. Because Azuku Midoriya is watching his, uh, or watching his life flash before his eyes, Azuku Midoriya is watching as his life is being stripped away from him, covered in a green goo, and as or as if his body was completely out of it, as if his his mind, body, and soul were now separating from his body. He could see himself engulfed in that that goo, in that green sludge, and then out of nowhere, his body would be slung, getting slung across the area barreling out from underneath the well bridge and as it does as it tumbles and as it crashes azuku would be sucked back into his body the soul or his soul or his mind and his consciousness sucked back into his body and all he would see is darkness but then he would see something he would see one thing that would show up in front of him this is where things begin to change it seems like it's a video game like screen and it basically tells him that if he doesn't accept this quest that if he doesn't accept this idea and this system of becoming strong and and leaning and 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 setting off on the quest of becoming strong well then he will die and it begins to count down he has to make an answer yes or no does he accept or does he does he de decline and it says if he does not answer it would be imminent death if he says no it would be imminent death and it begins to count down from 10 9 8 7 and then azuku realizes what it's saying realizes what he has to do and he clicks the yes button as azuku would then wake up almost instantaneously and spit out part of the sludge villain that's that was in his body and he looks up to see the one, the only, All Might. All Might would be standing there asking if he's okay because the kid wasn't even breathing. Deku would then struggle to his feet and he would tell All Might that he thinks he's okay. And he looks around and asks what happened to the sludge villain and All Might says that he collected him up and that everything's okay now. He's just happy that the kid is safe and sound and not, well, kicking the bucket. In which Azuku turns around and thinks to himself, well, okay, but how did that even happen? How did, what was that? In which All Might would ask, what is what? In which Azuku would look around once again, and as he turns around again, he sees that All Might has already jumped off and left, taking the sludge villain to prison. Unfortunately, All Might couldn't stay. He has a lot to do, but unfortunately, Azuku had a couple more questions for him that will not be answered at this moment. But as Azuku is be continuing his journey, walking back home, or continuing his path, it seems like other things begin to pop up. A message popping up in his, in his top right corner of his vision. Clicking on that message, he sees information, talking about what he's doing, talking about the system, talking about what he currently has, and that he's been chosen 
by the system itself to become powerful, to become strong. And which would shock Azuku thinking that maybe this is his quirk, maybe this is his calling, maybe this is the way that he actually can become a hero. In which immediately as he thinks this, he sees something that pops up and it says daily quest, train to become a formidable combatant. And immediately it says goals, push-ups 100, sit-ups 100, squats 100. And immediately it says, and then it says, run 10 kilometers. Caution, if the daily quest remains incomplete, penalties will be given accordingly. Immediately, Azuku is thinking, that is insane. But what does it mean by daily quest? Does that mean if he doesn't do it now before the end of the day, being that of 12, 12 a.m., does that mean he fails the daily quest and then he gets penalized for it? Or is it another 24 hours that he's given? He thinks to himself that it's probably a dumb idea for him to just ignore this, something that literally just saved his life. So immediately he would run home thinking at least he can get a head start on this 10 kilometer run. And then once he gets home, he'll do his push ups, sit ups and squats. But he knows this is going to be freaking hard. And that is an understatement. So he decides to run home, getting a little bit of the uh, of the running done, and he continues to do his push-ups, his sit-ups, and also his uh, his squats, getting those done relatively easily, because he's not you know a weak kid by any by any means. He's not like you know terribly weak, but he is kind of struggling. Now this t 10 kilometer run is what really really is going to put him behind, but he decides to try his best, and let's just say through a lot of struggle he barely gets it before 12 a.m., but soon he would realize that it's really just a 24-hour limit from the time you got the system, but nonetheless, it doesn't really matter because he basically puts per puts it perfectly in terms of, uh, well, more or less just kind of the sequence of needing to do it. So now it could be the full 24 hours from 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. type thing. So now it, he doesn't have to worry about it um, in terms of a 24 hour uh, idea, but he does get rewards for it, which would shock him greatly. And it would say status recovery. It would say three stat points or a random loot box in which he would think well, stat like what is, what is it talking about? What stat points? And as he says stat points, it seems like these stats come up and immediately it shows different different stats that he can actually put things into, being that of strength, durability, intelligence, agility, sense. These stats would, would be completely out of the ordinary for Zuku because, I mean, what the heck is this? Like, this is like an actual video game. I mean, how is he supposed to, or what, what, what is even happening? Like, how is he supposed to manage all this? What do all these things even mean? Because at the end of the day, I mean, seriously, there, there's only so much you could actually, well, know or understand, right? I mean, we're talking, what, what, what does strength and vitality and agility and intelligence and sense truly mean? It, it's kind of an interesting thought, but he thinks to himself, I mean, he really has to really break this all down for himself. And as he's looking at the stat page, he sees that it also says his name, Azuku Midoriya. But on top of that, it has a job and title right there or sitting right there that is just kind of sitting there stagnant as if nothing has been inserted or he hasn't had a job or title. Now, he's not sure what that means either, but at least he sees that now he can put stats he guesses so he decides he's going to put three stats or three of his three points into strength he, he feels like that's the best way to go about it especially because we're talking about push-ups sit-ups and squats maybe that will make it easier for him to do those things and then also make it easier for his to do his runs and azuku would continue to do this and let's just say he's gonna be pretty damn powerful after a 10 month training period and let's just just flat out say this if he just sticks to his daily quest just that alone and just put, keeps putting stats after stats after stats after stats he's going to continuously get stronger and stronger and 
he's going to be drastically more powerful now he won't have much else other than those stats and he even sees that there are there is like a shop and and other things like that where he could sell things and and other and and buy items but he hasn't even gotten that far after the 10 months of training he would have stats that look very similar to like 303 strength 200 vitality 200 intelligence 100 agility and 100 sense he's overall pretty balanced but he feels that having more strength would at least give him the uh, ability to kind of fight at the level that a lot of these other people fight at and his intelligence his sense and all that it just helps so drastically with his future assignments and studying for the ua entrance exam because that's a massive thing that izuku wants to do and he does consider or does think and kind of thinks to himself do, should he tell his mother about what he has and about like you know his powers and his strength and all that should he really do that i mean what happens if he doesn't or what happens if he he does or should he or uh, he's not sure he, he doesn't know and he doesn't he's have, has no idea if he really should do that to, to that extent and he feels like his level of strength is just off the charts and it may be kind of scary so he does eventually decide to tell his mother he decides to tell Inko Midori about about what he's what he has what he's doing and what happened she would freak out a little bit but then and the, but then Azuku would show proof that he has all of the things he said he has he would show off his strength and his strength would be insane in a in a light punch he would be able to shatter a tree yeah shatter a tree because we are talking about a totally different version of the system at this point because Azuku himself in terms of time if we're talking about it making it a daily quest I mean the time within My Hero Academia is absolutely insane and I'm gonna be honest with you there is no point no chance and no real reason that Azuku would either choose a random loot box and and he doesn't even know what that is frankly and he thinks that's kind of useless for now and the only other thing that i could think that he would end up using maybe from time to time maybe that would decrease his his um his output a little bit would be the status recovery but you got to keep in mind he also just doesn't fight anybody yet so his status recovery doesn't really matter it's just massive amounts of fatigue in terms of well him utilizing it to a certain extent but it does seem kind of odd that his his stats can be so high that all of these stats i mean it feels as if he's super strong super fast and everything you can possibly think of it seems like he's going to be able to take everything on but what he doesn't understand is that the system that was gave or was given to him is a little bit different I mean, at the end of the day, he hasn't done really much of what he should be doing in terms of, well, other things that he doesn't even know exist yet. But at the end of the day, he does realize very quickly that when he does another daily quest, it seems as if the stats no longer exist, that he can no longer gain stat points, only status recovery and random loot boxes. In which this would confuse him just a little bit thinking that maybe he overdid it maybe he did too many of them or got too too many stat points in which would kind of make him confused like is this his maximum strength how is he going to do anything better i mean it makes no sense to him uh, this thing i mean it's basically useless now why would he do a daily quest that's not going to make him any stronger in which this would frustrate him just a little bit but he would then think to himself maybe he should just not do the quest i mean what's the point now there is no point so he decides one day very soon close to heading or heading up to going to ua he decides that he's not going to do the quest anymore he's not going to do the pen or he's going to just take on whatever penalty zone they're talking about i mean who cares right i mean at this point it doesn't matter so he wants to see what the penalty is all about because at the end of the day he's been doing this for 10 months straight i mean it's driving him insane at this point like what's even going on why 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 is this even a thing and why the heck is he not able to get any stronger i mean this is something that is confusing izuku but soon 
he would realize that there's so much more beyond just this daily training and just this daily training thing to get stronger because soon the penalty zone would put him in his place but luckily enough work ethic and strength and everything he's gained let's just say it might put him in his place to make him realize that there's so much more but there's also something or also something good about being sent somewhere that is very unknown to himself because when he's sitting in bed watching the time tick and as as 11 59 p.m is about to strike 12 a.m he then realizes that he really should have done the quest because now he's going to have to deal with something a little bit scary he would appear in what seems to be a desert it's a vast desert where endless fields of sand stretch throughout the horizon and there's no wind there's no sun no moon no stars it's just an empty sky and it's terrifying it's as if it's a as if it's a painting as if it's this painting that was created for this specifically and as he turns around oh let's just say this right here is something he wasn't expecting because poison fang giant centipedes begin barreling at him and he begins to run thinking this is insane how, how could this even be happening what are these things and he looks at them and his senses begin to go off and it seems as if it's it's showing that these monsters are this weird green glowing color not necessarily around them but around their their top of their heads and they're called poison fang giant centipedes but it's as if it's telling him that he could actually defeat these things that these are relatively um a simple defeat and that he is high enough quote-unquote level even though he's not really leveled up much he's literally only gotten stats from the daily quest but he is high enough level to basically fight these things or high enough strength and all of the stats to fight these things fight these things so he turns around and lands a punch on one of them and sends its head flying clean off and as he does this he he feels more exhilarated more confident so he continues to bash in all of these things and as he does he begins to gain different fragments as if he's gaining the fangs of the poison fang giant centipede and gaining the scales of the of the poison fang giant centipede as he's gaining different things he's confused it's as if he has this infinite inventory that he didn't even know about everything about this is it's as if he didn't have this thing for 10 months He's learning so much more maybe there is so much more to this system that has been gifted to him maybe there truly is so much more to what he has azuku would continue striking down these centipedes and eventually there would be none left eventually it would be gone it'll be it'll be handled but it seems as if the next time the penalty zone is entered well let's just say well it's not going to be as simple as it was because it it's going to adjust and readjust to what strength he's currently at but that's a problem for for another day that azuku doesn't even know is going to happen he would get out of the penalty zone and would be covered in sweat sitting on the bed that he left with sand kind of carried over a little bit from that area but he sees that he's leveled up He's leveled up five levels and he can actually put more stats to an extent within the uh, within his own stats for strength or ability intelligence and sense it's not a ton of stat points but he's gotten a little bit per level is what it seems like gaining around five stats per level but as he basically checks out his stats once again it seems as if they've changed as if his stats have kind of changed a little bit as if the penalty zone well it adjusted not only himself but also the stats that he has it seems he truly didn't understand what this whole thing was all about and it seems as if the penalty zone decided that well it was going to penalize him even more than sending him into a death trap of centipedes but it was going to reduce his stats even more reducing his strength to actually 203 and his vitality and intelligence back down to 100 
it seems as if he has a now a base stat of 203 for strength and then 100 down the board he's confused at why this happened but he does have um 25 basically more points that he can put within the system it's as if the system basically penalized him for not continuously growing and continuously doing his daily quest and him thinking that he was truly done with it so he decides that he's going to put well the other the extra 25 points that he has into intelligence making his intelligence 125 and he has a really insanely good stat total still but they did or the system itself took away quite a bit from azuku midoriya and he still doesn't have a, a name or a job excuse me or a title itself and well soon he would be able to get that because he has a quest that is about to show up for him and as it shows up it says get into ua high school at the ua high school entrance exam and that's exactly what his next quest will be and he heads off soon the next day to the ua entrance exam and he listens to president mike speak on and speak about this and that but azuku continues to look at his well his his entire system i mean he wants to learn now he wants to figure this thing out because there has to be more there's so much more that he doesn't know he thought he had it all figured out and dumb of him he of course he definitely did not and he needs to make sure that he never gets a setback like that again i mean we're talking about a ton of stats that he just lost we're talking about months of stats that he lost that's something he never wants to lose again and he wants to make sure that he doesn't get punished that brutally ever again while he's thinking to himself everybody would then go off to do the the written portion of the exam and the written portion of the exam is pretty damn easy for Izuku. I mean, his intelligence stat is so high. He is already very smart. And frankly, he studied and it was a breeze to study. He easily finishes the exam, written portion of the exam, passing it with flying colors. And then on top of that, when he goes to actually take on the robots, being that of the practical, he easily decimates robot after robot and a robot after robot over and over and over again. And he just obliterates through them as if it's completely completely easy for Izuku in which everyone is shocked to see someone so fast someone so strong it seems as if he's running around and fighting things like someone like maybe All Might or someone like Miraco and it's kind of insane I mean he doesn't have a weapon it seems like he's just punching through them with his fists maybe he has a super strength quirk and all the teachers would be questioning this because his file says that he's quirkless in which this would bring a massive amount of alarms to their heads but someone else well he would be completely shocked but also very interested that being all might all might would be completely shocked by the idea that this kid has well no quirk but he is this strong something to truly think about something that he might have to think about maybe for himself and also for one for all as well azuku midoriya would hear as the, the the alarms would eventually blare and the zero point robot would show his face but let's be honest the zero point robot is kind of useless if you can get out of the way and azuku he decides he's not going to fight the zero point robot well that's until he sees something pop up on his screen saying that he either he has to fight the zero point robot and defeat him or die in which this would shock him thinking wow this thing's going to force him into terrible situations or he'll die anyways so yeah that's definitely not good but he accepts the quest of course as he dives forward toward the zero point robot punching it in the face as it staggers backwards azuku would push it over and would jump up into the air and land one crucial blow to its circuitry and shatter it to basically pieces and then immediately the quest would sound and it would say that well he passed the quest and gained a dungeon key in which azuku is completely taken back by this a dungeon key what the hell and azuku would obviously be leveling up throughout this seemingly him destroying robots did give him a couple levels a couple more maybe about two or three more levels and he just decides that he's going to put it into an um to agility 
giving him 115 agility, but the real question for him personally is this dungeon key. He puts it away for now, putting it in his inventory, not wanting to mess with it at this moment, and he leaves the entrance exam after the alarms blare and they're allowed to go home, and it seems like now it's just a waiting game. For weeks, Azuku continues training, um, continues to just do status recoveries or, or even doing loot boxes, which the loot boxes would kind of, you know, show up and have miscellaneous things that are, let's be honest, kind of useless. But he does get another dungeon key throughout these like two weeks as well that would make him even more curious. Maybe he should dis or maybe he should try this other stuff. Maybe he should try and um, basically go about his um, go about his way of doing a dungeon. I mean, he hasn't tried before, so maybe it's something he should try. But before he could even go along that line of reasoning, before he can even think about doing a dungeon himself, well, let's just say he would get very good news. A letter would come in the mail and he would grab the letter and it would be from UA High School. As he opens it and pulls out this tiny little kind of mechanical thing, he places it down to see a hologram show up. It is All Might, the number one hero there to congratulate him on getting into Class 1A of UA High School. And on top of that, well, he's the number one student. It show, a screen would then show up and it would say that he passed the quest of getting into UA High School and which would grant him, well, some miscellaneous stuff, nothing insane, but as he accepts it once again, he or basically confirms it, he would then see a hidden, a hidden achievement slash quest passed and this hidden achievement says number one student in UA and it shows a hero suit that has now been gifted to Azuku and on top of that it also gives him the title of number one student in class 1A or number one student of, of, first, of the first years of UA high school. Now this title itself isn't insane. It gives a mild boost to um, any any training he does that is going to be within um, the boundaries of UA High School, and it's nothing crazy. But it also gives him um, a 15% bonus to to strength against any any villains or anybody like that when defending students or also working with other students in UA High School. So the title isn't crazy impressive, but at the end of the day, he also gets a hero suit that is also going to give him different str or, or different stats as well or give him bonus stats that could definitely and massively benefit him. It seems as if it actually multiplies his his intelligence and also agility by 1.2 times. It's nothing crazy, but it's a hero suit that he actually imagined up himself. So it seems as if the system somehow has, you know, a tap in on his mind to an extent, but it is a hero suit that is more advanced than something his mother would have made. But he takes on the, the title of the number one year one student in UA High School. And on top of that, he is ready to go into UA High School but there's one thing that still makes him question, one thing that makes him really think, well, it's those dungeon keys. And he'll have to try them out. He'll have to see what they're all about because he has the suit, he has the year one or year one um, number one student, and he has all the a couple different, very, very unique stat bonuses that can help him. So maybe it's time to take on this quote unquote dungeon, but maybe he should wait until he goes on to UA and soon that's exactly what he'll do. Heading off to UA high school, entering his classroom with Shota Aizawa and Shota Aizawa is there to make an impression. It doesn't matter if you're the worst student or the first student. This is UA high school and you all are going to be future heroes either if you like it or not and you're gonna go through hell and it all starts day one of ua high school but that is for the next part of what if deku had solo leveling azuku midoriya's first day 
at UA High School. Now this right here is the time for him to truly show what he's capable of. And when he enters and he sees everybody and he hears Aizawa talk and, and all of these things and Aizawa is, is talking about doing this or doing that and he talks about also giving a quirk assessment test. Let's just say everybody is straight up staring at Izuku, like staring at Izuku. And he's not 100% sure why, but soon he would understand, well, pretty quickly because the dude is an absolute freak of nature. He's about 6'3", completely shredded, and he's an absolute monster, kind of like a Greek god's physique, and he didn't even realize that he looks this much different. I mean, it seems like all of his stats, all of his um, his training and everything um, went into him growing and getting stronger and all of these things, but he didn't know he was going to look like this. It must be just a benefit of, well, the system. It seems like the system is actually helping him out or at least doing him some good justice overall and he's pretty shocked to see this and he now knows why everybody is straight up staring and kind of drooling over him now the guys are the guys are jealous and the girls are are obviously completely attracted to him but that's not really in the mind of azuku at the moment all he is doing is locked in listening to aizawa talk about some sort of quirk assessment now the quirk assessment is a basic one they all go out and they all train or they all kind of test out what they're capable of but let's be honest, Azuku doesn't really care that much about this. Once he throws the ball, getting the highest score, one of the highest scores, same thing for the speed test and, and the grip strength and the, 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 the odd rotation stretching and anything you can think of, the sidesteps. He gets such high scores in every last one of them, he's just automatically the number one in that quirk assessment test. And it's not even close. And it's not exactly fun for him you could say azuku's not really entertained by this specifically he's more thinking about what this dungeon key really has in store for him and luckily enough he's gonna learn exactly that because when he gets out of ua high school he would actually look toward his dungeon key he would begin spinning the key around his finger and looking at it and then it seems as if the the system that is currently giving him all his strength is actually pointing in a specific direction he begins running in that direction feeling that i mean he might as well get done with with his uh kilometers for the day he heads off in that said direction and he continues running until eventually he comes by a bit of a underpass you could even say he walks through the underpass as the surroundings around him begin to change drastically as if something is currently happening and the outside world is changing dramatically he then would run into a what seems to be invisible wall and he would insert the key inside this invisible wall as he does it would open up and he would begin to walk through a place that he's never seen before but he feels something that is odd it's as if it's going or his senses are going off in every direction and eventually a ton and when i mean a ton i mean a ton of these random people would just show up these people though would be would be like villains of some sorts but they would be wearing this odd creepy red mask these creepy creepy red mask individuals would begin trying to attack azuku but azuku could tell that he is far stronger than all of them combined and as he defeats them and as he continues to beat them it seems as if he can basically just continues to get xp after xp after xp gaining level after level now his growth in terms of um leveling in terms of stat points is kind of plateaued to this point a lot of time and training and all of that good stuff has really helped him but what he really needs is weaponry better armor or anything of that um, of that aptitude and eventually he would be able to gain a weapon but it's something very basic as he defeats multiple of these quote-unquote villains or these kind of pseudo creepy looking mask uh people that are trying to hunt him down he's able to get a basic sword He's not really familiar with use a lot utilizing a sword, but when he swings it around, it feels pretty damn natural. 
and it seems like the sword itself is actually pretty beneficial to him too giving him a decently sizable boost in his in his agility and strength but it's only about a five percent boost in both of the stats now a sword isn't necessarily what he would like to use when he becomes a hero he's not gonna be able to slice people open and kill them this whole dungeon system seems to be a little bit different because the system is basically telling him that he needs to kill these people now there is a margin of of error here in terms of him wanting to take over this dungeon but he does clear the dungeon relatively quickly until he gets to a giant door that would obviously lead to the boss level he's gained quite a bit in terms of uh strength to this point and quite a bit of levels to this point maybe maybe around five extra levels putting him around maybe level 15 16 but at the same time his stats are of a level way way beyond that i mean his stats are at a different different type of level so it's not really that big of a deal just not overall now in terms of well just you know flat out defeating this dungeon azuku would walk into this giant doorway now this giant doorway would have some crazy crazy things or at least one specific crazy thing and when he would enter he would actually see a giant giant sludge villain yes the villain that was able to kill him and for the most part is the reason why he has the system but it seems as if uh well it's kind of odd because this villain right here well he's obviously uh looking for a bit of revenge it's as if this villain has been programmed with, well, specifically everything that Azuku basically is, was, or uh, can be. And basically, Azuku is known by this villain. It's as if this sludge villain is the same sludge villain. Now, this doesn't really make Azuku scared by any means, but the sludge villain tells him that after he's done defeating him, he's going to take over his body and live the life that he wants to live so badly, beginning to say stuff like that he doesn't deserve this power and so on and so forth. But Azuku doesn't really pay much mind to it and begins to think to himself that his true hero journey must start here in this dungeon and in this brand new area. Without a second thought, he begins to blitz the sludge villain, and, well, let's just say the sludge villain realizes very quickly that this is far from the original Azuku that he once knew. The original Deku, the one without a quirk, the one that would have absolutely, absolutely no chance of even fighting him one-on-one, -on -one, is dashing around, landing punches that literally sling him and his body parts or his, sl his sludge-like parts all over the area over and over and over again. And soon Azuku would realize how quickly he could truly defeat something of this monstrosity and soon Azuku would do just that and he would defeat this giant version of the sludge villain and he would watch as it says across his face and across his eyes that this dungeon has been completed and the rewards well it's actually something that is very interesting from the sludge villain and that is the ability to actually create and basically build your own specialized weapon now this weapon isn't anything too crazy i mean you could basically take a weapon from anywhere in the world and utilize it yourself from your simple hand hand-to-hand -hand combat gl uh, gauntlets or punching um, boxing gloves to, to knives swords um shurikens and so much more but it seems like this weapon specifically is a very basic one it's super super basic but it does have the ability to be upgraded it seems like he can now upgrade that weapon or that specific weapon with gold and the weapon would continuously gain massive benefits so he decides that he's going to actually utilize some sort of gauntlet now these are smaller gauntlets that have mild spikes or kind of like a blunt object on his fist the idea is he can utilize his hand-to-hand -hand combat the one that he 
basically inspired it off of or from All Might and utilize it in a way of, well, combat or overall combat. He doesn't like the idea of utilizing a sword, doesn't like the idea of utilizing, you know, a knife, dagger, a scythe, or even a bow. He likes the idea of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and maybe in the future he could even get an extension of what he uses, like gauntlets, but also for his legs. Now, he hasn't really thought that far ahead, and that's not something he needs to worry about at this moment, but it's something that he could definitely think about in the near future, because that could heavily benefit him in that near future, just flat out. Now, these gauntlets, like I said, are extremely weak, and as he exit or exits the dungeon, he sees that they're basically nothing. Now, he would take basically all the gold that he made that he made from the dungeon, other things, and also just selling miscellaneous items within the within the system. He uses all of it to more or less um just try and upgrade the so-called gauntlets, in which they do minorly upgrade getting it to about the same level as the sword would have been, but instead of a 5% bonus to basically your or his strength and also his, um, his, his agility, it's not just a 5% bonus, it is a flat out, well, well, you know, 10% bonus, or at least a 10% bonus. Now, that might seem good, but this will exponentially get better and better the more he puts into uh, this weapon specifically. Now, he could always trade it out and use a different weapon because this is, is an earlier off weapon, but it's a weapon that could potentially be the strongest of them all if he's able to find a way to earn a lot of gold from the system itself. Now, with that said, he would finally head home, but he would realize that the outside world was still definitely going on and traveling in terms of time and his mother's not too happy about the idea that he is home that late but still she's kind of okay with it just as long as um well you know she's or he's not flat out you know hurt or dead that's always a plus for uh you know for a son not to be so he, uh, he, since he's okay, she kind of gives it up and is like, you know what, that's fine. Um, and the next day, he would actually go into, into class relatively excited to see what's going to happen. But here's the thing. This is kind of boring because he would learn very quickly that it's going to be training with All Might. But here's the issue. The training with All Might sounds great. And the idea of training with or against or... Um, learning from someone like the number one hero All Might seems amazing, but it's pretty obvious that the hero training that they have in mind is going to be majorly lackluster. Now, at least in the eyes of Azuku, because he's actually set up with someone by the name of Ochako Uraka, and he's going to be taking on Tenya Ida and also Katsuki Bakugo, and with his new hero suit, with his new gauntlets, and all of the above, which, by the way, the gauntlets that he has, nobody can really see them. I mean, that's just something that only Azuku can truly see. The only thing they can see is the physical hero costume, because that is, uh kind of like a cosmetic you could say a cosmetic that is actually going to be beneficial um but she he is able to add different armor or different plating and nobody would even be able to see those things um in in its entirety but that's for a later time now heading into the heroes versus villains training this is something that is not only basic but also kind of boring for zuku at the end of the day this is not going to be a fair fight and this is not going to be something that anybody can really keep up with. And that's because Azuku is just at a different level. Azuku Midori is at a totally different level compared to most of these people. And that's just the fact of it. Azuku continues to show what kind of level he's truly on. And continues to show not only Bakugo, but so many others that he is truly the alpha and also the greatest hero prospect really to ever live. And that includes someone like All Might. And he easily defeats Bakugo and Tenya, knocking them both out and touching the bomb very easily, making the this training session for Ochako a very easy one. I mean, something that 
that they don't even have to really worry too much about and it seems as if everyone is put on notice like every last person there is put on notice they're all insanely impressed not only by Izuku's capabilities but they're kind of scared of him I mean damn look how big strong and like you know big of a dude he is and on top of that the way he moves the way he fights the strength that he that he has I mean it's pretty obvious that his level that he's at right now is so beyond anyone else's that it's kind of scary for them like who who and where did this guy even come from like this dude is a different level of monster and how the hell are you supposed to do anything about it like seriously in which everyone is you know in a mixed feeling you could say because everyone is kind of like yeah it is scary to have azuku um or it is scary that azuku is as strong as he is but also at the same time it's kind of good right i mean azuku is on their team like is on their uh on their team to an extent of course and and of course like you know he is just flat out a little scary and and everybody that you know it's kind of a mix i would say everyone is scared but also some people are very very into azuku being that he is like six foot three completely shredded and all that stuff so it does kind of make sense that you would get a bit of a mix in terms of um fear but also fondness at the same time but azuku wants something different i mean he continues to do his daily training he continues opening these boxes that basically give him nothing, just stuff to basically sell. And then eventually it comes down to this, this one single thing. And that one single thing, well, that's his ability of overtraining. Yeah, he decides one day that he's going to do some tr extra training. I mean, at the end of the day, he has to stay in shape get ready i mean these are big hero shoes he wants to fill so one day he decides to double the amount he normally does and that normally that whole double the amount thing that's 200 push-ups 200 sit-ups 200 squats instead of a 10 kilometer run you get a 20 kilometer run he decides to do all that and he thinks to himself at least he's getting some decent training right like that's the whole idea for him personally is getting decent training and he does it and then he gets a secret quest message something about getting um a hidden quest that he never knew about and this right here is where he would see something he never knew would even exist and that is a s rank type of key and for a dungeon that is extremely powerful now he doesn't really know the whole ranking thing i mean he knows that he's strong and there is really no ranking system in uh in his society but he does think to himself that this must be something crazy like we're talking an s rank type of dungeon maybe maybe it's uh extremely powerful maybe it's something he can't even handle right now but overall it's something that excites him something that makes him extremely excited something that makes him feel as if there's something um that he could truly strive for because right now everything's kind of dull the hero training the quirk assessment i mean everything is kind of dull i mean yeah you can kind of say that it is all useful for him because at the end of the day he does want to be a hero but at the same time it feels dull like literally everything feels kind of boring and this would lead him to actually checking out this dungeon a day before a trip that they didn't um they didn't know much about supposedly being something about rescue training so the day before rescue training he decides that he's gonna go check out this s rank or something dungeon and he does just that he checks it out and let's just say this thing is absolutely more insane than he possibly thought because this thing has an entry gateway of a monstrous being that is absolutely terrifying but here's the thing the monstrous being is something that looks very familiar to azuku now not familiar in the way of like oh yeah i know who that person is but familiar in the way of this thing this giant monstrous being is a dragon that looks very similar to the dragon form 
of a, well, another hero by the name of Ryukyu. Now, this is interesting. He never thought that they would have this much connection, and it seems like maybe it's a gauntlet type style of different types of, of people that are heroes or extremely powerful heroes or maybe villain versions of the heroes. He's not sure, but when he faces Ryukyu, a, a basically dragon version of Ryukyu, it is pretty damn obvious the strength that this thing has because Izuku, he's never been in a fight this bad or a fight that would tr make him struggle this heavily. Luckily enough, he does have his status recovery just kind of packed away and he decides that he's going to hold on to it until he really, really needs it. But a giant clash with a dragon is another thing. He continues trying to close the distance and also land crucial blows to this giant dragon, but it's extremely difficult. It is. This is the hardest thing he's fought and it's only got a yellow tag. It seems as if it is a very difficult boss for him to fight, but he is pretty well prepared for it, just based on his stats and level. Now, he was he prepared for it in terms of physicality, in terms of strategy, and all of the above? Not really, because he had no idea this thing even existed. But luckily enough, he's able to basically get a little bit of his own trickery here and there, and it seems like Izuku was somewhat willing to kind of take down this being and somewhat willing to more or less fight fight this thing um at on its own terms type type of deal he continues to to to, to trade blows with this giant um, ferocious creature and eventually um ryukyu's kind of evil um vi or or villainous version would breathe fire toward azuku and azuku would would find the opening to land a crucial a very very crucial blow to the head of ryukyu now this crucial blow would be something different this crucial blow would land straight to the head of ryukyu killing this monstrous being and ending its life in one foul swoop but Izuku throughout this is on his last legs. He status recoveries, luckily enough, but he is hurting. I mean, this dude is completely, completely drained. And luckily his status recovery is allowing him to have his stamina and also his health basically back to on par. But without it, he would have been going to school completely drained and out of it entirely. But after defeating Ryukyu, it seems as if he's actually gained a permanent buff this permanent buff is is very very interesting giving him an actual fire like damage that could always be applied this would weaken the defenses of anything or anyone he fights and for the large parts would allow him to take on beings and an armor shred or basically shred any kind of you know mild type of uh you know armor or sh or, or heavy strength or um durability for the most part and it would allow him to shred that durability not only for himself but many others this would allow himself and many others to continue to basically um take a fight or take a a fight with somebody or take a fight with uh, a monstrous being that frankly in, in the normal sense would be kind of out of their range or out of their aptitude but luckily enough this would allow them to do some absolute nonsense like some crazy stuff and this would allow for Zuku to kind of basically be not only the front line and be able to punish and hurt people very 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 much but also allow other heroes to just be stronger as well and that's always beneficial um as a support as a hero as someone that is going to um be be with a partner or a duo or anybody like that that is always beneficial but luckily enough azuku the next day is going to be able to wake up squeaky clean and be okay with heading off to ua high school and taking on this so-called rescue portion of training now he would head off on the bus 
a little bit tired but nothing too crazy and when they would arrive let's just say Azuku's senses would be going off like crazy so much so that he's a little bit um afraid I mean why is his senses going off the way they're going off why is his senses kind of freaking out on him at this like overall I mean there has to be a reason for this and he makes sure to actually bring this up to well Aizawa the idea is well if there's something going on at least Aizawa knows and if there's um truly something happening that it's good for someone like Aizawa to actually understand fully what the uh the thing is uh or what thing is truly happening that is that is something that Aizawa needs to know and luckily enough Azuku's going to be able to tell him uh just that specifically now Azuku tells him this and explains the senses that he has and and so on and so forth and then eventually they're able to kind of narrow down what could occur during this time but let's just say him kind of telling Aizawa this at least now just doesn't really help them in the long run because the villains have already set their trap and the villains are already approaching and it seems like Shigaraki and many others are going to invade UA or the USJ in UA High School. And on top of that, well, they've come with some reinforcements, but Izuku has a plan. But that plan is all through the system because the system is telling him that he needs to go head to head one on one with the USJ's Nomu, the Nomu. A black-like being that is basically a monstrous creature that more or less was created from a dead person. Experiment gone wrong, or at least right in the eyes of the villains, but experiment gone wrong in the eyes of the heroes. The Nomu itself was created to even kill All Might, so the fact is, it seems like the system believes that Izuku's next stop is to be even greater than the and then japan's number one hero because the system truly believes that izuku can not only defeat the nomu but he can kill the nomu because his goal his his i or his thing his idea his strength his his whole goal strength ideas and on everything relies on him killing the nomu and the reason for this <laughs> it's because the quest says defeat the nomu or die and that is the final thing and azuku sees this and wonders defeat i mean does that mean he has to kill him in which it is confirmed that the nomu has to die for azuku to live so what will happen how will azuku defeat this nomu or maybe is he or maybe is he prepared more than he could possibly imagine for the nomu specifically and maybe this is all an elaborate setup to get him prepared for something that hasn't even happened yet. Azuku Midoriya there to take on the being that is willing and able to kill the number one hero in Japan. What would that mean for Azuku if he can survive this encounter? Would that make him on the same level if not a higher strength than the one and only All Might? Well, I think many of you and many others would agree on the fact that this Nomu right here would be equivalent of him trans trans transitioning into being the same level or at least to the same degree that All Might was or is. Now with that said, the fight between Izuku Midoriya and the Nomu is going to have to happen next time on part 3 of What If Deku Had Solo Leveling. Azuku Midoriya is with Class 1A at the USJ. The USJ is the start of what truly Azuku Midoriya is capable of. Because, well, he's going to be taking on the strongest being there, being that of the Nomu. He's going to be taking on the Nomu, and this Nomu is no joke. The Nomu seems to have power that rivals even someone like All Might and it also seems as if the Nomu will be no joke in terms of physical capabilities and before Aizawa could even stop him 
from doing anything, Azuka would jump into action immediately. There would be no hesitation with Azuka Midoriya. He would jump into action, facing down and absolutely smashing every last villain there. I mean, we're talking the entire group of villains. He would eliminate them almost instantaneously. And then he would turn to the Nomus the no or the Nomu. The Nomu is a pretty big deal, and he has a quest to defeat or kill the Nomu specifically, so he's going to make sure to do that. He wants to make sure that the Nomu dies and that there is no chance that this Nomu has a way of not only living, but also a way of hurting some of his classmates or other people in general. So he decides to make sure that this Nomu goes down. He's going to make sure that this Nomu has no chance at surviving not one bit. And immediately, he would he would absolutely lay blows into the Nomu that most people around him can't even see. This hulking figure, being that of Azuka Midoriya, would begin throwing lefts, rights, uppercuts, everything you could think of in unison absolutely putting a beating on the Nomu, and you can see the Nomu's skin slowly but surely starting to degrade. It seems like the Nomu's, the Nomu's skin is getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and as it continues to get more and more weak, it seems as if the Nomu, well, he's slowing down as well, and it seems as if he well, Azuku continues to show weakness after weakness that the Nomu currently has. And also on top of that, his new ability found from that, that S-rank like dungeon is definitely showing off its capabilities. And it seems to be at a perfect time. It seems as if the system knows what he's about to go up against, or at least something similar to what he has to go up against, and it seems to be benefiting him greatly. Azuku is putting the absolute hands on this Nomu, and he is beating the Nomu into submission. So much so that all the commands that are being told from um, from Shigaraki and, and anybody else trying to basically survive aren't going through all of these commands are just flat out not working and all of these commands are flat out just not actually happening everybody and all the villains are currently defeated except for shigaraki and kirogiri but for the most part i mean it is flat out an onslaught of well the nomu itself Shigaraki is actually completely and utterly in shock at the fact that Izuku is this strong. He must have a quirk that allows him to, to gather strength like, like absolute insanity, but here's the thing. Izuku seems to, well, be pretty much in a place of complete domination at this point, and Shigaraki wasn't ready for it at all. He begins to question to himself, if this was some sort of trap. Now, it might sound odd, but at the end of the day, it could be reality. Did All For One set him up to fail? No, no, that, that's ridiculous. There's no way All For One set him up to fail by any means. But how did this even happen? I mean, seriously, like how, how would it even get to this point and how would this even, well, occur? Az it seems as if they miscalculated how strong this Azuka Midoriya truly is, or maybe All For One had no idea who this person was in the first place. Now, they did have limited information on the, the kids or the teenagers and their quirks, but it, if All For One knew someone like him existed, there would have been way more pre um, precautions in general. There's just no way that he would have just easily been like, oh yeah, it's, it's fine and everything's going to be all right. No, 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 definitely not. They, he definitely would have taken this far more seriously and he would have given Shigaraki far more to work with because before All Might even arrives, the Nomu's already in a pile of dust. Azuka Midoriya taking out his entire or his, the entirety of the Nomu's just ability to regenerate 
And f the fact is, he absolutely, absolutely obliterates this Nomu. And he does it with all the skills that he's gained throughout this time. And he does it with every last one of them. I mean, everything that he's gained to this point, everything he's gained this this entire time. I mean, Azuku just flat out just got to a different level already. And he's gotten to a different kind of state of, of power that many heroes or many villains, anybody would not have known of. And when All Might arrives, seeing Kurogiri and Shigaraki being the only villains left over, it's pretty obvious what the villains are about to do, and that's get the hell out of there. And that's exactly what happens. They just dip out as fast as possible. Now, with this all occurring, Azuku would gain quite a bit of experience points, leveling up um, a little bit, but also gaining kind of more passive bonuses in terms of the nomu and this first passive bonus that he actually gains from the nomu is the ability to basically tell if something is actually dead or not and also kind of regulate others heartbeats now by regulate i mean literally be able to tell if their heart is properly beating or if they are completely well dead or brain dead and that's what the nomu more or less was a brain dead monster a monster that used to be a human but that human was mutated changed and experimented on so much so to the point that he was nowhere near a human being so now that he has that passive ability he's able to actually see those things but I'm gonna be honest, Azuku sees this as kind of an odd thing. I mean, what would he actually need something like this for? Yes, he understands what the capability is, but what's the point of actually having it? I mean, he doesn't need to know if someone is dead necessarily. I mean, yes, it would be okay to be able to tell if someone is gone or resuscitatable or anything like that, but it doesn't necessarily seem like that's the whole reason why he has this power it doesn't seem like it's some sort of support power to make sure things are you know resuscitatable in that direction right or what's the time limit on someone's death i mean he has no idea what the point of this truly is but nonetheless it's kind of beyond the point it's at least something semi-useful um to an extent right so he can't really complain necessarily and there's not anything wrong with having an extra ability or extra powers in general now with that said there's a lot of things that are coming up very very soon and those things would more well, more specifically encapsulate well this so-called ua sports festival but in all transparency Azuku is the number one student, and Azuku, well, flat out, is just not like not likely to lose this UA Sports Festival. I mean, at the end of the day, Azuku Midoriya is absolutely strong. So powerful to the point that he makes things look like an absolute joke. So when you enter into this cavalry battle, right and you enter into this obstacle course race in all of these things azuku will win first place in every single category especially the normal stuff now when we get to the one versus ones we are talking about a totally different thing and i'm not saying a totally different thing in terms of him losing i'm saying a totally different thing in terms of what's at stake because azuku midoriya would see a quest on his screen saying that he needs to win the tournament or die now this would lead him to have a totally different mindset so much so that he doesn't care about anything else and that includes helping somebody unlock further potential and that would include stopping or flat out not convincing Todoroki to use his fireside now would this set Todoroki back a little bit of course but at the same time he won't play this weird game with Shinso where he talks to him he's going to knock him out of the ring ASAP he's not going to play games with Todoroki or try to convince him to use his fireside to be stronger and give it his all he doesn't care and this actually leads to Bakugo getting his one versus one 
that he actually wanted so badly. And that's good for him. I mean, at the end of the day, Bakugo wanted that so badly and still wants that so badly. And he gets his, let's just say, his ass beat pretty bad. I mean, there is no way around it, but Bakugo gets absolutely destroyed. I mean, there is no way around that idea. Bakugo is out of his league by a large margin. And Azuku would come out on top and he would gain bonuses after bonuses, levels after levels. And this is where he would decide himself that he's actually going to take on a very minor um, agency, right? He has an internship that is coming up and he could go to like some of these bigger internships or go here or go there or whatever. And it's, he does get an odd conversation that would lead him into thinking that maybe there's something going on further than he could possibly imagine. And that conversation is with All Might. Yes, I said it with All Might. Now, for starters, Azuku hasn't really talked much to All Might. I mean, outside of the fact that he is technically um, one of his teachers. But overall, he hasn't really gone out of his way to like you know have full-on conversations with azuku and vice versa now azuku would get an invitation from all might to actually go train with someone who trained all might being that of gran torino but there is something that also needs to be instated and he tells him that the only way he's basically allowed to do this is if he agrees to actually doing something for him as well now of course azuku doesn't know what he's talking about and says that he hasn't even decided 100 what he wants to do and he doesn't even know if he truly wants to go train with all might's uh all might's past teacher he doesn't know if that's really going to be good for him so he decides to kind of kind of be wary of this offer and eventually they have a conversation and this conversation would veer on to the idea of all Might being able to pass down his powers, offering Azuku the chance at one for all. But as he's having this conversation with All Might, the system begins to reject the idea of one for all in his capacity. Seemingly, there might be some conflict or anything into that manner, but immediately, Deku is or has, has to refuse one for all and says that someone else could definitely benefit from it and he hopes that he can find somebody better suited than him personally but he apologizes to all might as uh, basically telling him that it is truly a pleasure um basically being offered this and he wants to know is there any chance that he can still train with someone like gran torino who trained all might even though he won't be able to well literally you utilize one for all and benefit from that as well now this would lead to all might saying you know what why not let me allow the kid to actually um work with and also train with um someone like gran torino maybe it's going to benefit him like greatly and even more now this leads to azuku actually accepting and going to train with gran torino during this time and this training is beneficial don't get me wrong and it's actually good because azuku is able to learn a new fighting style and a fighting style that by the way suits him pretty damn well especially because this leads him to realizing that the gauntlets he has well yeah they're all great and dandy but imagine if he got armor or kind of shin like um kind of weapons that that would allow him to have lethal kicks and be able to implement this even more i mean this could be amazing for him just through combat or through combat and so much more so this is something that he's super interested in and super just flat out um grateful to learn and grateful to just get get more insight on now of course there are some interesting things that will happen now we are talking about gran torino and things very similar to the original canon would occur and that would include hosu city now there would be some threats in terms of um of people or uh, villains not not really being too fond of of going out especially after dealing with such a strong student 
but forcing themselves to go out this would lead to Azuku having conflict with the one and only Stain or the hero killer. Now, this would lead to Stain and also Azuku having a one on one battle. At the end of the day, we talked about it before Todoroki's probably not over the whole daddy issues thing he has. And, well, yes, there could be a chance that Azuku or that Todoroki decides to still be around his father in terms of actually deciding to train and be involved in his his whole you know um agency but there's also a, a massive chance that they flat out just or he decides to not mess with them at all like not he's not gonna want to be involved with um that though or those people or his father in general now this would lead to like i said Z azuku versus the hero killer now i could say flat out that the hero killer has no chance but i mean yes that may be true but this combat would be one for the ages and one that the quest and um also the system would believe to be something of merit in terms of well literally telling him that he either wins and defeats him or flat out dies right he d it doesn't actually say that he needs to kill Stain, but it does say that he flat out needs to beat him, and this would lead to Azuku kind of gaining even more experience. So much so that he actually gains another fighting style from Stain himself, and it seems as l as if Stain's um, martial arts experience w is going to be gifted to him via the quest. Now. This fight isn't easy necessarily. He takes on Stain and he has some maneuvers he's half he has to defend um, from, but at the same time, his durability allows it. So when Stain cuts through his body or tries to, I mean, it doesn't really make a mark. Maybe a tiny, tiny little scratch, but that tiny little scratch is far, far, far from enough to actually stop, um, well, him from literally dying. I, or st it's not enough to stop him from basically being uh, subdued or anything like that. It's, it's nothing crazy. I mean, literally, this little scratch doesn't even draw blood. So it doesn't actually hurt Azuku a large degree. And he's able to easily defend himself, get out of there, and so on and so forth. And it's kind of a benefit to him just fighting Stain because he shows off some of the weaknesses he has in his own his own fighting ability and flat out it is pretty pretty absurd how good stain truly is but the capture of stain is obviously another thing so you can't really deny the things that he truly was able to do or really capable of doing now with that said, this would put an end to the internships um, of UA and what's going on. Um, flat out, this was kind of a full-on ruckus. And at the end of the day, um, Tenya Ida was very lucky that Azuku was there to help. And Azuku would begin to have a conversation with Aizawa about his next final exam. Now, flat out, I'm going to say this straight up. Azuku is one of, if not the smartest person on the planet. He is super hyper intelligent at this point, And he's one of those people that can learn things almost instantaneously. So maybe he's not technically the smartest person on the planet. But if you gave him everything to ever be learned on the planet, he'd be able to absorb it in a matter of days. Now, this isn't something that really needs to be done for Zuku. He hasn't really thought about this by any means and not something he he really seeks after because at the end of the day, he wants to be a hero. He doesn't need to be all this extra stuff. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't have to be the smartest man on the planet. He, he doesn't care about being that now. Um, this would lead to Azuku being able to ace the final exam like super, super, super easily. Like he'd be able to easily um, ace the final exam. But here's the real thing. The written exam and the practical are two very different things. So what's going to happen for him in the practical exam? Who is he going to take on? 
Well, it could be someone like All Might, which that would be the most practical probably thing to do. Or it could be someone as strong, a little bit weaker, or whatever. Now, this would lead them to having a bit of an issue. I mean, at the end of the day, they are kind of contemplating with the idea of who they actually want to stack up against them. But All Might brings actually an interesting idea to their plate. He actually says that, how about this? How about he doesn't do your traditional practical exam? How about he doesn't actually fight a teacher? How about you just have him do something that's a little bit uncomfortable for him specifically? In which this would be interesting. I mean, what would be uncomfortable? And Aizawa would immediately get an idea. What would be uncomfortable for the strongest person arguably the strongest if not the strongest person maybe in japan at this point what would be different what has he not done well one thing he hasn't done is been able to actually run a team without carrying or being a substantial part of that team so put they think that they will put his mind and great knowledge to use by allowing him to actually plan and strategize every single person's game plan for basically taking down whatever teacher they have to take down. And this right here was a pretty good idea because he actually stayed up for a full on day strategizing every single person's game plan. And let's just say everybody does some pretty damn impressive things because of it. Azuku was given something that he could also learn and also be able to absorb himself and he passes his written exam and also practical exam with flying colors through this because at the end of the day they told him he would fail if they followed his plan and lost and every single person to an extent was able to win either through escape or through handcuffing the person or the teacher that they had to go against and it was pretty damn impressive overall and Azuku has these plans or had those these plans be enacted very very specifically to the person that they were dealing with now it could have been um to help with their confidence it could have been to help with their their own strategy or anything or all the above flat out it was something that was very very useful for everyone and very very useful for even Azuku, because at the end of the day, at this point, he's seen as someone that can stop anything. And that might be true. He might flat out be able to stop anything. Azuku might be able to literally beat anybody or anyone. But the thing is, life and, and power and strength and all of the above is never that simple. There's going to be people out there that fail, fall, die, get injured, and frankly, there's nothing you can do about it. And this exercise, yes, it showed the intelligence, it showed his ability to actually make a plan and structure things in that, in that direction, but this also showed him that when things go off the rails, people make choices, and those choices cannot be changed and that's something that Izuku himself really never thought about. He has the strength. He has the power. He himself can literally affect things in a way nobody else can, at least when he's on the battlefield. But when he's not, things do go off the rails. Things do change. And things that cannot be stopped truly do happen. And that is what he'll truly learn. Something that it seems like the system is has been pe preparing him for for a very long time because soon they would go off they would have their training forest training camp forest training um arc and the training would go well everything would be fine azuku midoriya would have a pretty good time training um kind of talking to other people and kind of gaining their trust and flat out just mingling with his classmates meeting new people and so on but of course 
things change very quickly. Things change quicker than you could possibly imagine. Because Izuku would watch as things in the camp would go somber and change faster than you could possibly imagine. And when a little kid is threatened, when a child, yes, a child is threatened and more or less um, threatened to be killed, those are times that things are terrifying. Because the villains, they don't follow a rule book. They don't follow Jack Squat. What they follow is their own greedy desires. And when one person, a giant being, a giant creature of a man, faces down with a little kid by the name of Koda, and he's about to squeeze the life out of him, Azuku was there, luckily, to stop it, beating him down so badly that he was almost unrecognizable. Yes, Azuku's realization of the changes, realization of some people, maybe they're just better off dead, is something that continues going through his mind. Heroes like All Might, people like them, they are the people that are worth a, a living, breathing air. They are worth pe are being alive and being cared for people um people loving them but these people that threaten children hurt them and do all these horrible things they do not deserve life but azuku knows that he was taught differently by aizawa and many others he can't take this life even though he would love to so badly but nonetheless that man muscular he is beaten down and humbled far greater than you could possibly imagine. And they would drag him off on a stretcher because Azuku Midoriya was taking his frustrations out on him. And soon, Azuku would realize that life truly is unfair. Because the people that are, that are allowed to live, the people like All Might who, who have been doing great things sometimes have consequences because no good deed goes unpunished and soon he would see that in motion because after the invasion after the entirety of the invasion of the forest training camp we would fall into a time of awkwardness this time well this time would be something that everybody would remember for their entire lives. Because once the forest training camp was over, done, and solidified, they would all head home. But this home, they don't realize that a plan was being plotted. A plan was being implemented. They had no idea that, well, all for one was creating something that nobody knew was going to happen. And that would be a, conf a confrontation with the one and only All Might. He would face off with All Might once again, but this confrontation would be different. This situation would be different. Nomus surrounding All Might. Nomus killing, hurting, destroying. All Might would would scrounge everything for himself. People would watch on big screens. All Might would knock knock down and knock out and destroy one Nomu, then another Nomu, and then another. All of them down, done. All of them down. But one person, one person stands there, still breathing, still capable and still ready to take the life of our beloved all might the heroes would try to step in but even they even them they can't do anything to all for one and frankly they're occupied with even more nomus occupied with more and more people and this is where things get terrifying because azuku would be watching but soon everybody would realize that he's gone. Azuku would be bolted off, leaving as quick as possible 
to the location of All Might. He knows that he should have been there, but he couldn't be because of these stupid rules, these stupid ideas that a hero, that a student can't, can't help. A hero, a, a student, a student that isn't fully fledged, isn't a fully fledged hero, can't truly help. So eventually, yes, he would show up. Eventually, yes, Azuku would show up. But guess what? He would walk over and he could hear the beating heart of All Might. Slowly but surely, he hears the beating heart. More, more, slower, then slower, and then tell his heartbeat. His pulse would become so faint that he can barely tell if he's alive. That's until, well, his literal ability that he's gained from killing a Nomu, well, tells him that All Might has been killed. Azuku's realization, on especially on his face, would tell the entire scene. He arrives, but he doesn't just arrive in complete and utter anger, pain, or, or even a want of destruction. He's arriving in a complete state of nothingness. His body, his strength, everything. It feels so odd. It feels as if he doesn't want to be there, but he knows he should be. It feels as if the power that he has, well, it feels kind of useless. And it feels as if, well, that he wasn't able to help him. That he could do nothing. And it sucks that he could do nothing. But soon, all of that pain, all of the numbness, all of the rage, all of the silence would then stop. A screen would come over his face, the darkness would creep in, but a screen would, would be there in front of the darkness, and it would say congratulations. Why does it say congratulations? Tears would feel, fill Azuku's eyes as the actual reality of the situation sets in. He wasn't there. But why is the system telling him congratulations? And the system would say, that true loss is what was needed and that he has now entered a different, a truly different state of mind. And not only that, he's gained a truly different power, a power that expands even beyond death itself. He said it before and he said it a million times. That good people die, but bad people deserve it. But unfortunately, the good people, well, they are the ones that have to deal with the consequences. But this time, the villains, the true horrible people, will have to deal with the consequences of what has just happened. He could feel the power pulsing through his veins. He could feel something that he's truly never felt before. This is not anger. This is not fear. This is not, this is not anything, anything that you could even quantify in normal emotions. But all he could think about is one single word. And all he can think about is one single person. And that, well, is All Might. But as he walks over to the lifeless body of All Might, the one that's on the ground, all for one would tell the kid that he wasn't here to help, huh? That he has nothing, nothing now. And there's nothing he could truly do, nothing that could truly save All Might. And Izuku says he knows. He knows he can't save him. But soon, he'll realize every single reason why this dead body 
should and will be him. As he looks toward All Might, he would put a hand on his head and he would shed the last tear for his fallen number one hero. The screens would watch on as Izuku would say one more time the name of the number one hero. All Might. Arise. As immediately the body of All Might would change, morphing into a shadowy light creature that symbolizes this number one hero. Some watching are in shock, others terrified about what is happening. Our number one hero, I mean, he's alive. No, he's not alive. What is he? Fear would go through the eyes of All For One. What the hell truly is this kid? And then a new quest would come over the screen of Azuka Midoriya. And that new quest would say, Take the life of all for one. But with that said, that is the end of part three of What If Deku Has Solo Leveling. Azuka Midoriya now stands there with a shadow or shadowized or a kind of misty, black misty form version of All Might. His shadow monarch powers have now been completed and he has now become the shadow monarch hero. But it's obvious that things are far different than you could possibly imagine. The death of All Might has now basically shown Azuku a different way of becoming a hero and that some of these, well, people are not deserving of a life and that person and especially one of them would be all for one all for one would be the furthest one that is deserving from life and all for one would stand there as he's in complete shock of the powers that izuku midoriya is portraying he would be in complete complete utter disarray as he sees izuku send a shadow version of of All Might toward him. And on top of that, he would see that things are about to hit hit the fan for him very quickly. Because this version of All Might is faster, stronger, and has way more abilities. And on top of that, he has to deal with Azuku as well. All for one, realizing that this fight is basically a foregone conclusion, he tries his best to actually land a crucial blow on Deku. But unfortunately, or at least unfortunately for him, he's unable to do so. And Deku is able to absolutely subdue All For One. But there's a choice that needs to be made. All For One lays there on the ground, completely out cold, and no longer a threat. But guess what? All the other heroes, they're finally arriving. But but the thing in Izuku's mind is that this man, he does not deserve to live. He does not deserve mercy. And as all the other heroes begin to gather up and see what's happening, Izuku Midoriya would use the shadow version of All Might to take the life of All for One. And he would say those vintage words that may even strike fear in hero and villain society altogether. And that's is all for one arise and as he says this a shadow version of all for one would arise and what seems to be the greatest villain versus hero battle in history ends with the hero and villain on the same side now this same side isn't truly what many would believe to be something normal and on top of that Heroes alike would surround Izuku and tell him that killing is not the way of a hero and would tell him that there would be consequences to not only him jumping into action, but him making the choice to take the life of somebody as well. Izuku would pan toward them looking at them all as the shadows both all, all for one and all might dissipate as they are now ready to be arisen whenever he needs. But as he stands there, he looks to the other heroes. 
Endeavor, Miracle, and many other of the stronger heroes, and some that he knows that aren't aren't very high on the rankings, but are very important, like Aizawa, Gran Torino. And as he looks at all of them, he begins to think for himself. He begins to determine for himself. He tells them that all for one knew that he had to kill All Might, that All Might's death was needed but he did not know the true consequences of killing the number one hero and all for one did not think about the consequences further than the idea that all all my himself well he needed to die that's exactly what all for one was thinking that all might needed to die now for everyone else everyone else every single last villain that could exist well, maybe they should follow suit as well. Everyone would tell him that that is not how hero business is done and that he should really, really think about what he's saying because he may lose every chance to become a hero in his entire life. Azuka Midoriya would tell them that being a hero seems to be a bit overrated and that maybe... He doesn't need what he thought he needed. He was excited when he went to UA. Excited to take on a new journey. Excited to start right where he wanted to start as a true student of being a hero. As a hero student. But now he realizes that sacrifice needs to be made. And that villains are willing to do more. And maybe that's a contrast of him stepping into this world. Maybe that's a contrast of power. Because when more or when, when heroes that are greater, that are stronger, show up in this world, they tend to combat, well, villains that are even stronger and more capable in this world. And that's why All for One was full and utter willing to do what he did. And this is a warning. For every hero, every villain, that they should never get in his way. Because now it is his time to hunt. And his time to find exactly who exa or exactly who needs to be taken down. Exactly who's the villains that don't deserve life at all. And he truly believes that. And everybody is telling him to calm down. That those words... They, they don't sound like him, but he tells them that they don't know who he is. They don't know what he saw, and they don't know what he's feeling. All Might is crying to him. The shadow version of All Might calls for justice, and the shadow version of All for One calls for peace. It may sound odd, but now with both of them on his side, maybe there is... A few voices that aren't exactly the ones of the former combatant and the former no number one hero. But still, Azuku believes this all to be true. And he decides that he's going to head off. He's going to leave. And he's going to basically become a vigilante. And as he enters this era of being a vigilante... Some heroes side with Izuku and believe he's doing good things. Others disagree and continue to hunt him down to try and stop him. Izuku begins to cleanse villains, villain after villain, and even finds a city that he's able to basically, not necessarily exterminate, but stop entirely. Believing that all of these villains are misguided. That believing all of these villains are not what they say they are. So when he enters defeating every last one of the Liberation Front, well, let's just say things go pretty differently. He tells them all that he could. He could eliminate and kill them all. But he doesn't believe that they truly are bad people. He doesn't believe, not here, not now, that they are of villain society. So he's going to give them one chance. That chance is to side with him. Side with the safety of this world. And they can live happy and peaceful in their own society. 
in which the Liberation Front, after seeing Deku's power, after seeing everything that he was capable of doing, how do you say no to an offer by him and in which as Deku tells them to stop their own crimes, hold off on what they're doing, and soon they'll be able to live a normal life. And if they're not okay with living a normal life, well then they could truly wander off, go somewhere, try their crimes once again, but there's a chance that he would be lurking around a corner, that he would be there. That he would be there not only to stop them, but to kill them. As Deku would leave, giving that one mission or message to everyone after every single person, including Redestro, was defeated. There is massive, massive tells that these people are are basically on the bridge, on the bridge of of some different version of a life that they never knew existed. But soon, Azuka Midoriya would even get a phone call. And that phone call, well, that would be from someone that he wouldn't expect. Sir Nidai. Sir Nidai has found somewhere by the, well, found somewhere and someone by the name of, well, Overhaul. Overhaul is the leader of the Shia Hazaikai, and he wants to take down and invade the entire base, and he wants the help of Azuku Midoriya, in which Azuku says that if he wants his help, that, well, he needs to prove or that he, that he actually wants it, and he, this is not some elaborate trap, in which he would just send the location, telling him that the, the raid is at 6 a.m., and that if he wants to come to help, they would greatly appreciate it. And Azuku says that he will be there, but he will be there with insurance. As a shadow, or more or less one of his shadows, would continue to whisper toward him, not, not sweet nothings or not anything bad, but that there is someone loyal to him and to them that they could utilize in this insurance plan. Azuku Midoriya would tell them that they would that he would arrive at 6 a.m., but utilizing all for one's visage of some sorts, or more like his shadow, they would find something that would be completely and utterly loyal to all for one, and now completely and utterly loyal to Azuku Midoriya, the Shadow Monarch. Now they immediately head off at 6 a.m. Arriving a little bit later as the siege begins, but as a giant monstrous creature would would basically confront them immediately a giant mon another giant monstrous creature would take the fight to him and that would be a controlled giganto machia tackling and subduing immediately so many of the villains as all for one's shadow would would basically allow Azuku to communicate with him freely and allow him to have full and utter control. This would continue on and they would basically eliminate every single villain here and a lot of these villains are being taken down and they're not fully killed or at least not fully killed in, in, the, in the moment but Azuku does give them a chance to at least imprison them. Because he doesn't truly know what these these people have done, and doesn't know what these people have truly truly basically uh, fulfilled. But eventually, he would learn of exactly that. And let's just say these people will be determining that his there are Zuku will be determining that their lives are not worth keeping around. But that's beyond the point, at least for now. Azuku would head off to face down Overhaul as Mirio is currently taking him on and Azuku would see that a little girl by the name of Eri seems to be ragged and also extremely hurt. In a speed or in a massive speed bullet, he would grab Eri, take her out of there and bring her to safety, having one of his shadows take her away and allow uh, basically take her to a nearby hospital that is basically right next to them. And Azuku would help with overhaul, defeating him and also about to kill him. Mirio would tell him not to, that he's done, that, that they have him, they, they stopped him. But Azuku tells him that this right here, this 
right here is exactly, exactly what he's talking about. This guy right here has tortured a little kid. This guy right here has run a gang operation for how long? His father as well, that he does not deserve life. He does not deserve to live, but he nods toward Mirio and says that if he gets out, if he somehow gets out, that he will be coming for him as well, not just overall. In which Mirio could feel chills run down his spine as if a shadow was passing through his body, but he would realize that at least Izuku has a, a resemblance of, well, kind of bargaining that they he, that he will do what they say if it kind of suits the proper way but here's the thing with villains defeated with so many defeated there's only one that is on the mind of azuku at least right now and that well he would be shigaraki shigaraki is someone that is currently hiding away realizing that the liberation front is not something that they can actually do at this moment because let's just say a lot of them are taking the advice of Azuku Midoriya or the guy that absolutely scared them shitless. Now with that said, eventually Shigaraki would would arrive and eventually Shigaraki would try his best to become who he wants to become. But even that version of Shigaraki that gains more and more power would just fall short in the face of Deku. But even before he could actually become what he wants to become, somebody would be there and somebody would have found them with information, with, with, with calculation, with everything determining, every determining factor, they would stumble right into where they are and Azuku would be confronted by Nomus, by, by monstrous creatures, but none of them could stop him from walking in and stop him from this moment. The moment he ends this villain society in Japan forever. And it all starts with the death of Shigaraki. Shigaraki would be killed in a glorious battle that would flatten half of a city and guess what? It wouldn't matter because Shigaraki is now gone and gone forever. But I said it before, every single time a new villain will fill the void. But for now, it seems like that void is only made up of shadows. Azuku would stand on the, on the rooftops as heroes would converge on this crater uh, that used to be half a city. And he would sit there waiting azuku knows that there is now peace or at least they can enter a true peace time in japan but for now he knows he needs to wait lay dormant and wait and this would lead him to continuing his training through dungeons through the system and through so much more and this right here is no longer the shadow monarch hero this is the Shadow Monarch Vigilante. The Vigilante that makes every single villain fear the shadows. And makes every single villain fear even doing the simplest of crimes to the most expert of crimes. From taking from a small store that is in the middle of nowhere to actually killing and hurting others. Every crime is feared Crime would shoot down like an absolute missile, and even someone like All Might couldn't even get crime as low as Azuku Midoriya did. But like I said, one day a villain would eventually show his face, and one day a villain would eventually show what they can truly do against the shadows and the shadow monarch vigilante of Azuku Midoriya. But that day is not today, and that day may never come until Azuku, well, isn't ready. But for now, Azuku has shot crime rate to the ground and has essentially made peace in the entirety of Japan, allowing for Japan to lay peaceful 
for at least the time being. But with that said, this is going to be the end of What If Deku at solo leveling, or What If Deku had the system. I know some of you will say, oh, this was a rushed ending, but I'm going to be honest. A lot of these scenarios that could happen with Deku and Izuku, there's really no point of me elaborating further. The strength that he's obtained, the power that he gains, and frankly, the 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 convenience of the system earlier on in the, in the story is exactly what led to him having such a massive turnaround. Now, with that said, if you enjoyed, still show some love. Leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. Um, I have full intentions of doing different types of what ifs as well. Maybe we'll even go back to blue lock. I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't hold me to it. But there is a chance we go back to blue lock. Maybe we do some more uh, Deku what ifs. Maybe we do Tondra what ifs. Maybe we do maybe a now Fumi what if. I haven't decided uh, just yet. Definitely want to do a Sun Jin Wu what if. But uh, yeah, with all that said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you did, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. All that good stuff. And I hope you all enjoyed, like I said. And I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.